Okay. We call you to, to order now. The art door is closing. Well, we're doing fairly well on our program. We're going to um, Mary and I are going to share now on the face of God, faces of God, and uh, then we're going to have our lunch break at twelve thirty. So. We're, 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 we're just squeezing slightly in terms of slicing off the, um, a, a short time of sharing at, at, at this point in the day. Um, but in fact, um, we've got a very um, expansive uh, way of having the afternoon. If you look at the programme, it's, it's very much a, a, a prophetic, yeah. prayerful um, sharing time, understanding what the flow of God, what God is doing amongst us at the moment. So, we, we were struck by um, these four faces in Ezekiel chapter 1, that um, the lion, the man, the ox, the eagle, as, um, uh, that reappear again in Revelation. Ezekiel gets a, a, a number of doses of this um, mobile thrown on wheels, moving about the earth. Um, and, and that's what it actually is, because in Ezekiel mm. chapter 9 or 10, he looks up and he sees this throne of sapphire mm. with high up a figure like that of a man. So it's fascinating, this, this vision that Ezekiel has. And of course, his response is one of just awe and wonder. I mean, complete wipeout. And in fact, the only way he gets to his feet is because the Spirit of God picks him up and sticks him on his feet again. I've never been very fond of these over-officious ushers in Holy Spirit revival meetings that just when you're nicely lying down on the floor, <laughs> they're, they're, they're lifting you up to move you on. You know, and in fact... In some of these instances, this is slightly tangential, but not. You know, I've resisted going down in the spirit because I thought, well, I'm going to get as much of this laying on the hands as possible before I go over. Because this sort of factory machinery approach, so that things are, all oh, right, they're going over now, next. You know, and it's, it's actually, that's the point where you need um, to curate people's experience and be available in prayer for them. Put a pillow under the head. You know, if they've if landed on a piece of wood, it's not exactly great to be lying there for the next half hour with a piece of wood digging in your back. You know, it's all right to, you know, make them a cup of tea. You know? <laughs> make it really cosy. But, but um, not to regiment the spirit. When the, Holy, when the spirit lifts the Ezekiel up and, and stands him on his feet again, it's, um, it's for more. It's for more. That's, that's, that's got to the, 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 an engagement with, with Jesus. And I think just following through that love affair that God wants with us in our rulership, in our understanding of who we are on the earth, we need to understand it starts with that relationship. It's really given me fresh dimension to the phrase prayer and the ministry of the word that the apostles <laughs> devoted themselves while other people got on with attending to the tables. Mm. You know, because actually, it's very interesting, um, uh, the, 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 all the service of the saints, whether it's Stephen and Philip being picked mm. out of the seven, requires them to be full of the Spirit, mm. full of grace mm. and wisdom and stuff. Mm. And these guys went on to, to have faces gleaming like angels. Mm. Philip translating from A to B to C and so on. So, um, and, and they were um, attending to the tables. In fact, the same word in Acts 6 has the apostles saying it's good that we get on with attending to what we're up to. It's the same word, that diakonos word, actually. Mm -hmm. That same service. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand what table we're serving at, what we're doing, how we're positioning ourselves and sticking to that in our rulership. And so when this phrase, um, getting, uh, uh, that we need to attend to prayer, 
and the ministry of the word, I thought, you cop out. When I first read that, I thought, you know, there, there's, there's 5,000 people who have just come into the kingdom. And these guys are disappearing off somewhere, having a sort of prayer time, you know, quiet <laughs> reflection kind of thing. And then, you know, having a, having a bit of a, a, a great expository time, you know, working their way through some Bible course online thing that they've picked up. Really enjoying it. Could you close the door for us? Thanks. And um, so they, they, they are the ministry of the word. And then when I realised it was attending, serving, like at the table, the ministry of the word, mm. I began to realise that what this intimate relationship that we're all called to, whatever positioning is going on, requires prayer, and that actually is the call to intimacy, mm -hmm. to find out from the Lord and listen up, mm -hmm. what is going on? What is the next step? Because we've got 5,000 people out there and we've just had a presenting problem trying to solve how to make sure that the, the Gentile, the um, Greek-speaking Jews get, get, get a looking mm -hmm. at the table. And, and, and we need some wisdom from you, Lord, so that then we can minister out what we've just heard in the, in the throne room, in the intimate bower place, and we can minister out the word that we need right now, out there. So if, far from, if you like, slacking on sin. Okay, Philip, Stephen, you sort all that stuff out. We're too busy with, oh, man, you know, kind of, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I mean, you know, bless them, the Benedictines had the right idea about balancing their day with work, devotion, and, and so on. But you did get the feeling there was a sort of underclass of monk that was out there in the field all day long, you know. And um, praise God, God met Brother Lawrence practicing the presence of God mm. over his washing up. Yes. You know, hallelujah. God didn't neglect no. the ones that were hungry. Kaidman got his songs in the yes. fields. Mm. The first, well, recorded English speaking praise songs. So there is a place where we're going to get those words to minister out to our situations where we are at. But if we're landed with all of this going on, we better get start engaging in an intimate relationship with the Lord, not a kind of, oh, I don't know what we're going to do kind of approach. And so that intimacy is a, a, an active part of the whole body of Jesus Christ rulership net that's going on. And the, um, I, I, we're invited in Proverbs 4 to fall in love with wisdom. Mm. It's really helped my marriage, this. Every now and then the Lord says, stick close to that one, that, that wife of yours. Stick close to this woman. And I'm using Proverbs 4. Because in Proverbs 4, wisdom is this really gorgeous lady. I mean, you know. And it says, do not forget her. And what will, what will happen if you don't forget her? She will protect you. And I have got a faithful, you know, little warrior. Somebody described Mary as a, as a, a, as a, a velvet glove with a brick in it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, you know, so don't get, don't, all sweet smiles, boom! <laughs> <laughs> and um, then it goes on to say, after that, don't, love her. Wisdom. Love her. And she will watch over you. This is Proverbs 4. Cherish her. I mean, this is very intimate stuff for something that could look very boring called wisdom. Unless you really start to understand this is great. This is life. This flow is what we're after. Because this is how we're going to rule. How we're going to steward God's blessing out into the world which is what we are called to do. We're called to be that blessing. Oh. So there is this not forgetting engagement. There is this loving, actually, whoa, let's, let's do some loving. Em embracing, cherishing and embracing. The cherishing gives you the honouring and exalting. Those, those are the, the link. It's the other way around, sorry. It's, it's um, cherish is the 
exulting, and they, you can check me out, I'm go, I've lost the plot. <laughs> and then she will present you with a garland of, of, of grace to, to, to grace your head and a crown of glory. So that's what wisdom does. So we, there is this eager place of rulership that I think the apostles pressed into of mm. prayer. They were really seeking out what are we <coughs> going to do. And the, the point of this gathering today hasn't been at all, I'm sorry to say, come aside and let's rest a while. Sounds great, doesn't it? I was, I was on a church retreat recently. Mary and I had been called to, to do some ministry at this local church and, and, uh, in, um, at the Quinto in near Wales. And uh, we thought, five days? Goodness me, I've never done anything that long before. This is going to be heavy duty. First day, they said, um, we'll have a brief meeting at 7 o'clock this evening and the next meeting will be tomorrow night at 7. And it was just... <laughs> <laughs> it was wonderful! And it really was um, just what the doctor ordered, you know. And um, there wasn't even any regimented meal times. We just dripped in when we wanted and boiled a kettle and, you know, had a piece of toast or whatever. And we had lovely natter times. So it was ministry, but in a very different kind of way of doing ministry. So um, the, that's not what we're up to today. We are actually not trying to have a, a come-aside by ourselves we're thinking we're having an away time in which we are um, building good relationships mm. with one another we're networking mm. with one another we're supporting and encouraging one another in our drilled down local patch whether we're in an isolated <coughs> scatter of houses in the middle of nowhere or whether we're in the middle of Blythe wondering, you know, where's the get out of jail card or whatever you're trying to do in Blythe. Um, God has got stuff for every one of us, even in Ashington, even in Shieldbottle. It's wonderful. And I suppose North Shields is okay. Oh, Yay. Yes. Hallelujah. I don't know if you've been to that. Um, North Shields. That, that. <laughs> North Shields. <laughs> You can uh, catch a ferry boat to it from South Shields yeah, from time yeah, to time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. And, um, th and then we're also wanting to encourage and support effective mission mm. evangelism across. This is what we're trying to understand how we are flowing together. The faces that Ezekiel saw were that lion, that man, that eagle. That ox. These were, they, they, I, I could put them in any order you want because actually you discover there are in any order. You look at it mm -hmm. one spot and they're in one order, another, mm -hmm. they're in another order. It gets very annoying. You think, mm -hmm. consistency, please, God. Mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. But we felt that they were actually um, carrying and conveying some attribute mm -hmm. and characteristic of God's interface mm -hmm. with humanity. Mm -hmm. And if we are, as we are, made in the image of God, mm. and are being conformed to the likeness of the man, Jesus, mm. Romans 8 says he's conforming us to his likeness. 1 John 3, verse 2, says that, you know, we, that that's the, the aim, that when he will appear, we shall be like him. Mm. So that's the trajectory of what is going on. So if that's the interface that we are to present in our um, co-rulership with Christ in the, in the earth, it's going to be one that extends the throne room of God, mm -hmm. if you see what I'm saying. So the four yeah. faces there, I would not presume to say there's only four, but the four faces presented, I believe, are the image of, of God interfacing with humanity. And because we're on the throne sharing that rulership mm. with him, we're not only being conformed ourselves to that likeness, that those, those, those four faces um, convey, but that is the presenting visual interface that God has chosen with the world. Mm -hmm. And so um, we can then get super interested in this because they're really telling us how we express his rulership. We are, we are here to express his rulership in whatever we think are the characteristics and attributes being carried by those, those faces. Whether it's the eagle, whether it's the lion, the ox, the man. There is something in there for us to consider in mm. how 
we do rulership. So that's what this is a little bit about in this, the, this, this last bit of time that we're, we're on to. We are looking at how we express rulership. And um, it, it's, it, 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 so it's not all about just kind of uh, positional or legal. It starts with that intimacy and engagement in the throne room, having boldly approached mm -hmm. and sat down with Christ in heavenly places, Ephesians 2. Verse maybe five, is it? Ten or something. Somewhere in there. No, it's verse five. And, um, and then we are ministering out that word mm -hmm. through um, whatever is appropriate. Whether it's through an expression of lionness mm -hmm. and, or eagleness or oxness. <laughs> and... I mean, you can, what can you do with the humanity thing? I'll, I'll give my little take on that, with the man, the face of a man. Um, these creatures have more than just faces. They're covered in eyes. They've got wings. And they've got um, calves like, like, you know, they've got legs like ox, oxen. And um, elsewhere in Ezekiel, they're called cherubim. So, they're, you know, and we got a little bit of a glimpse of, last night from Gabby, of how God... Um, took, if you like, the, the language of the Babylonians out there, um, where they had sort of cottoned on to these as kind of goddy-like mm. characteristics. And, and what is it then? You suddenly discover that God has slapped his throne down on it all. You know, I am God. These people, these, these, these characteristics merely do my bidding. Zooming around the earth mm -hmm. in this mobile chariot throne of mine, wherever the spirit goes, they go. And it's incredible, the wheels within wheels, moving wherever God wants on the earth. This mobile throne that we're on, by the way, seated in heavenly places with Jesus in this mobile throne, um, has, you know, moves to and fro around the, the earth. John 3, 8, you know, isn't just about the Holy Spirit moving wherever mm -hmm. he wants to. It says everyone born of the Spirit is like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we need to get used to this movement. Um, Although I, I, I feel a lift of sense of territory as I arrive in Shilbottle and, and, and Alec, I, I have a similar lift as I arrive in Northumberland and the North East, Tracy, because, you know, this is Northumberland-centric, but it's rippling out, we believe, as part of what God is up to in the whole of North East. And I'm yeah. thrilled by Hartlepool. I love what's going off there. And uh, you probably know Steve Sutton down in Teesside yep. well. And, it, you know, he's a great blessing to what's going off, I know, amongst churches anyway. In Teesside. So God has got a big strategy right now across the northeast mm -hmm. as part of this fire flame stuff. So really it is not a time um, this weekend to just be sort of quietly reflective about you know me and mine and you know what's going on with me with, with my bunions. You know, there is a, a rulership call in this room to network together, to position ourselves mm -hmm. correctly to hear from God and minister out these declared words on the earth, the practical wisdom of what we're going to be mm -hmm. up to. And um, so that's, that's brilliant. So the first one we're going to talk about is... Ta -da! Yeah, so um, I don't know if you read out when I was at Ezekiel 1... At I just want you to read a little bit because it's it's in line with the the wonderful. Oh, it's great sitting here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the wonder of uh, what God is doing. Ezekiel one four to six. A great storm coming from the north, driving before it a huge cloud that flashed with lightning and shone with brilliant light. There was a fire inside the cloud. And in the middle of the fire, something like gleaming amber. From the centre of the cloud came four living beings that looked human, except that each had four faces and four wings. So I just thought I'd read out that bit because it has that fire word in it. And just um, what we've been thinking about, about being, being the fire in the north. So the first face... They each had four faces, and the first face is the face of a lion. And uh, 
the first scripture that I thought of was came to mind was Revelation 5 verse 5 which is um, when John is standing in front of the the throne of God in his vision in Revelation and God is holding in his right hand a scroll and nobody is found worthy and John is weeping um, but one of the 24 elders says stop mm. weeping look the lion of the tribe of Judah, the heir to David's throne, has won the victory. He is worthy to open the scroll and its seven seals. So Jesus is the lion who's won the victory. And he's the one worthy to judge. <clears throat> so that says something about our rulership, that, that as we look at the face of the lion... We see the one who's won the victory. And it goes on to talk about, and then he sees a lamb. So it's like the lion is the lamb, but the lamb is also the lion. Um, which mm. someone wrote a song about that once that I really loved. The lion is the, the lamb. But, but the lamb obviously represents and, and Jesus slain on the cross. And tells of the victory that Jesus won because he, on the cross, he spoiled the principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly. Um, and uh, as it, sorry, I haven't got the scripture in my head for that, but you know the, you know the word. And uh, so, so it's really, we can, in our rulership, we proclaim the victory that Jesus has already won. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we also, God gives us that ruling and reigning because as it says as it says further down there you your blood this is about the lamb but referring to Jesus your blood has ransomed people mm. for, for for God mm. from every tribe language people and nation and you have caused them to become a kingdom of priests mm. for our God and they will mm. reign on the earth mm -hmm. so we are ruling and reigning mm -hmm. And we see all that in the face of the lion. Um, the tribe of Judah, there's a, when Jacob blessed his sons in um, Genesis 49, verse 9, he's blessing, J Jacob blesses Judah. And he says within it, Judah, my son, is a young lion that has finished eating its prey. In other words, it's a victorious lion. Um, like a lion, he crouches and lies down. Like a lioness, who dares to rouse him? The scepter will not depart from Judah and the ruler's staff from his descendants until the coming of the one to whom it belongs, which refers to the Messiah. Um, so again, you've got the fact that it's the line of the tribe of Judah. That tribe is the tribe from which it was prophesied the Messiah would come and is all about the rulership, the scepter of rulership will not depart from that tribe. So as we look at the lion, we, we see that we have the victory over enemies, Amen. that we have a kingly rule, we rule and reign. And also there's a, a sense in which there's, we can judge as well because it's, it's um, God's wisdom. It's his wisdom in us. Uh, I always love, I always think of, um, well, Aslan. I think a lot of us think about Aslan, that mm -hmm. C.S. Lewis chose to make uh, Aslan to represent Jesus, you know, as a lion. And, uh, and they, they, the beavers, this phrase always comes to me, they keep saying, yeah. he's not a tame lion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that always goes through my head when I think you see Jesus um, represented as a lion. And then there's something about his roar, the roar mm. of the lion. Mm. I found this verse, and I hadn't really ever taken in this verse before. Hosea 11, verse 10, um, says, For some day the people will follow me. I, the Lord, will roar mm. like a lion. Mm. And when I roar, my people will, re will return, mm. trembling from mm. the west, mm. like a flock of birds like a homing kind of pigeon kind of 
They will come from Egypt, trembling like doves. They will return from Assyria, and I will bring them home again. So I really love that, and I think that expresses something about how we can, in our prayers, in our declaration, we can remember that roar, mm. and that, and obviously we 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 are believing for people to come home, mm. come home to Jesus. Hosea 11 verse 10 and I read that you can hear a lion's roar from five miles away mm. Mm. so that's pretty powerful <laughs> um, and, and, and then there's another two scriptures that I thought were really good Proverbs 30 29 and 30 talks about three things that walk with a stately stride <clears throat> no four that strut about and the lion, king of the animals, who won't turn aside for anything. He does not retreat. And I really felt that was something we could remember as we, you know, at that strength of the lion, that he does not turn aside. He's got no fear. But it can help us to be really bold, which Proverbs 28 verse 1 says, The wicked run when no one, no one is chasing them. But the godly, the righteous, are as bold as lions. So all these qualities are like characteristics mm. of God that we can see in the face of the lion. And we can, um, as we look mm. at Very that good. face, you know, like as we look to Jesus, we become transformed more and more into his image. So mm. I'm really believing for mm. strength, boldness. Mm. Um, I think there was one more thing. Courage, strength, the lion does not fear, does not retreat. In fact, the word for, um, that word there for strength, what was it? Um, anyway, it's the word, it's a hero or a mighty one, <laughs> which I liked as well in, in the Hebrew. He refuses to turn back. So all those things we can see and we can mm. believe God, you know, we God has called us to rule and reign in that mm. same way that we see in the lion. We have the victory. Yeah. Doing a his and hers here. It's dangerous for Mary to stay. <laughs> Might knock her out by accident. Um, the eagle has um, the high perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, God calls us to have that. Rooftop, high perspective. There's actually a ministry called Rooftop Ministries. Don't know what they do beyond, the, the, you know, I'm not endorsing the ministry, but I like the idea that they encourage uh, Christians to go up to a high place in their, in their locality and to see it from the rooftops mm. going down, looking down on the community in, the, in the, that high perspective viewpoint. They live in the high places. They just visit the high places. They dwell in the high places, mm -hmm. don't they? But they, um, they're they able to drill down into the detail. You know, they can spot a mouse or a rabbit from a wolf mm -hmm. high up. And uh, so there's a, a, despite the great height, if you like, they're not out of touch. Mm -hmm. They are being um, salt, if you know what I'm saying, just changing mm -hmm. the metaphor for a minute. Mm -hmm. We are called in our rulership to familiarity and influence and in a sense perceived insignificance because we're being scattered around seasoning the place mm -hmm. um, smiling sweetly at the most obnoxious characters and believing that god can turn hearts around and at least reduce the smell by being salt in the place so um and then um having that they can strike suddenly they can strike suddenly Everything can be changed rapidly. You know, the first and the last thing a mouse knows about it. <coughs> that's, that's it. I was dive-bombed last September when we were visiting our, our family, some of our, uh, our son in Australia, in Melbourne. We went on a cycle ride and some over an overprotected bird decided to dive-bomb me because I was obviously cycling on the cycle track near the, near the, ne the nest. I mean, I would not like to to be dive-bombed. 
<laughs> by an ego. <laughs> it would be something else, wouldn't it? Mm. Um, that sense of being the, the wider view, the drilling down into the detail, means that actually, although I talked about territory earlier on, and I'm sure an eagle probably has a, a patch, we need to be willing to be led by the spirit anywhere. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. One of those coronation symbols is a, is a globe up on the, the, mm. the mantelpiece. Yeah. You know, the whole, in the words of John Wesley, the whole world is our parish. Mm. The great... Yeah. Um, way in which the, the law can just pull, you know, Ethel or Margaret or Doreen from anywhere, you know, and get them on the Holy Spirit on their knees assignment that's going to you know, change the election in Nigeria or something, mm-hmm. you know, or you know, that sort of way of thinking. That we are in that call to be a blessing, empowering way of thinking, you know, we are all called to step up to that. So, we don't have to think to ourselves that somehow <clears throat> we are not allowed to pray for this because it's outside of our territory. Mm-hmm. You know, the Holy Spirit is the one that makes the assignments all happen. <laughs> Let him blow you like those dandelion seed on the dandelion clock. <laughs> Wherever he wants you to land and administer rulership. Mm-hmm. Um, remember, this is what we're talking about. How these faces, these, these, these characters of lion eagle, are uh, helping us to express God's rulership on the earth. Then there is this thing about um, renewing one's strength, like the eagles in Psalm 103, Mm -hmm. verse 5, Isaiah 40, verse Mm -hmm. 31. Excuse me. I think this is about allowing change, actually, and vulnerability. Every uh, interval, they... The, the eagle, as is a lot of birds, they molt their feathers. Well, actually, the, the, the way the eagle molts, they're disabled for a, 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 a brief but significant period. They can't get off the ground, you know. They would drop like lead from their, their mountain areas if they dropped out when they're molting. Um, but they, there is, a, there is a, a, an acceptance and, a, and, a, and a, a allowing God to change the dynamic of what's going on to me, that, that molting is a great picture of allowing God to destabilize all the things that you think are so important for you in order to function, and that actually He can give you a whole new set of feathers. And the whole new set of feathers is much more, is strong, obviously stronger by definition. You know, you've renewed your strength like the eagles. So you must allow. That change, mm-hmm. that destabilizing, and stop picking up feathers and trying to glue them back on. You know, it doesn't work. So they make a nice display in the cabinet, and it's good to remember with thanksgiving the things that God has led you through in the past. And I, I weep over the most boring verse in the Bible in Leviticus, somewhere near the beginning, which talks about how the Lord treasures our ashes of the daily burnt offering sacrifice and he takes them out outside the camp to a special place. <laughs> Those things that we've done that in the, that, that day that, if you like, you know, all the hardship, all the pain and, and the Lord takes that, that burnt offering, just a heap of ashes and he puts it in a special place outside the camp and it's time for the next daily offering. And the next daily offering. And so we are, in one sense, to forget about the things that go behind, but the Lord treasures them in a special Mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. And um, out there, we have a a, a little bit of a prophetic installation called Precious and Remembered. Mm -hmm. And it's got bottles hanging from our washing line post with this sort of tangled twist of ivy going up it with lilies coming out of it. And it's like out of all the twists and turns of ivy... Psalm 56, it says that in the King James, that, you know, he stores up our tears in bottles. Mm. He remembers all the bits of pain. So it's all right to um, be full of thankfulness and, and treasure the things that have gone before. But there is a God of eternity who has put eternity in our hearts, who is with us, standing at Jeremiah 6.16 at the crossroads, for the next crossroads, for the next mm. crossroads. The, the word there really isn't, you know, the, the, uh, the ancient paths. What it means is the eternal yeah, paths. Yeah, yeah. The paths that 
that you look back and you, uh, the world is actually, you can't see over the horizon. It just goes back and back. That's the God of, the, well, El Alon, or El Alon, mm. whatever it is, the God of eternity. Mm. And you look forward and he's there going before you. You know, he's your rear guard, your foreguard, and he's with you at the now crosswords of what's the next step, Lord? And so we renew our strength. And then young egrets, I think that's the name for young eagles, get bumped out the nest to teach them to fly. Mm -hmm. They're not in danger at all, but, you know, you, you explain that as you're hurtling down in space and wondering, Mum, <laughs> what are you doing to me? But he's, there's, a, there's a place we've been given, space, to experience and learn mm -hmm. something. Space to learn to fly under the watchful eye of the Lord, you know. So we get kicked off the ledge, but we're not in danger. And then there's these things called thermals. Movements of hot air, mm -hmm. in the right sense of the word, you know. We, we move up and down. You get a lot of hot air, Christian. Sorry, Lord, that's a bad, bad joke. But it, for me, it's choosing our position and how we expend our energy. In our rulership, we need to understand what the positioning is that the Lord has put. And it's not a permanent set in stone position. It could be very flexible like the dandelion seed that we've talked about. But mm -hmm. choosing and staying where the thermals are is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. So that we, we saw and we just feel the lift of the spirit under us. And we know we're in the right place mm -hmm. using the resources within us effectively. Not being boxed in by other people's visions or how mm -hmm. you know they would like to see what, what's going on. We're listening up to the Lord as eagles in how we do our rulership. Mm. I've lost my wife. <laughs> Could you collect her, Lena, please? Or Joyce, please? And, um, and uh, so that she can talk about the ox. So, there we go. Those of you who are old enough, well done for this magic boomerang moment. Uh, mm -hmm. In a children's programme, you said, throw a boomerang, everybody froze. Well, we, <laughs> something got sorted out with the baddies. And then everything started again. Of course. The ox um, is, a, is a, a beast of burden, and uh, it, the, there's a, a few different scriptures that talk about the ox. Proverbs 14.4 says, Where no oxen are, the trough is clean, but increase comes by the strength of an ox. So the ox... Mm. is is strong mm -hmm. and it was it was um people were considered wealthy if they had many oxen you know it was a indicator of wealth as well uh 1 timothy five eighteen talks about which is actually quoting um another scripture you shall not muzzle the ox 
while he is threshing out the grain. And in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 9, it uses the same scripture. Paul um, uses that scripture to talk about how um, the, we, the idea is you, you don't muzzle the ox, you don't keep it from eating as it treads out the grain. Mm. So as it's treading out the grain, the ox should be allowed to mm. eat some of it too. Mm -hmm. And it's a very good sort mm. of description for that that we, we should be uh, receive from the work that we do. Mm -hmm. The ox was a very hard working farm animal. So he did the, you did the plowing with the ox, the oxen, but you also, they also did this threshing as well where they turned the wheel. So they were going round in a circle, turning the wheel to thresh the grain. So some characteristics I'm picking up were um, that oxen work hard mm -hmm. and that they also carry heavy loads um, but but they're they're strong that's what they're made to do so there's a strength so in our, our rulership God is giving us the strength for the for the task that we have to do um, but there's also the lesson that Paul brought out was that the the one who ploughs and and the one who threshes the grain, which were both jobs that oxen did, should both expect to share in the harvest. Mm. So that's also a together kind of message, mm. because mm. with us, some of us may be ploughing, some mm. of us may be threshing. Mm -hmm. You know, some of us are like Paul says elsewhere. Some of us water the seed. You know, some of us sow the seed. So we're, we may be doing different things, but we all um, should receive. Mm. And there is a promise that we receive in the work that we do, that we receive provision and uh, that we are supported physically. Um, I liked when Paul was talking about it, he said that, that in the same way the Lord ordered that those who preach the good news should be supported by those who benefit from it. So he, mm -hmm. he did a spiritual lesson. But he says he, he wasn't going to demand that right. So he didn't actually demand that. He gave, like, gave up his rights. Mm. And so there's a, there's a sense from that about how we give up everything, even things that maybe we should receive, like support um, or the grain as you're, as you're threshing it, but he, laying it down. And there's that sense of surrendering because mm. we're serving like Jesus came to serve. Uh, so the, the wonderful, the best scripture that I always think about when I think about oxen is Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30. Um, because Jesus talks about his yoke. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I spent a lot of time mm -hmm. looking at that scripture mm -hmm. many times and uh, thinking about how, because mm -hmm. this thing about come to me all you are mm -hmm. weary and fatigued because you're working hard that that happens to us quite a lot where you feel you know in the past and in the present sometimes you feel like you're working really hard and uh, you're weary and heavy laden overburdened and I will give you rest Jesus said come yeah. to me come to me and I will give you rest so as we look at the oxen we can think about that that even though we're working hard even mm -hmm. though God is giving us strength for the mm -hmm. task, Very good. Um, that even though we are giving our all in, we're serving, yet yet there's rest. Mm -hmm. So there's rest mm -hmm. as well, because Jesus has come to give us that rest. When we come to him, when we look into his face, he gives us that repose, mm -hmm. that rest. He refreshes us. Um, he says, take my yoke, mm -hmm. my yoke, so sometimes we might be under a, a yoke that isn't a good yoke, mm -hmm. that someone else is perhaps is forcing us to do something. But he says, take my yoke, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And um, there's a sense, the oxen always worked as a pair. There was mm -hmm. an older one and a younger one. And the younger one was put in to learn the job mm -hmm. from the older one. 
So, so there's a sense in which we're learning the job as well. And that's why we, like um, Phil was saying, Jesus put, sent them out in pairs so they could learn from one another. Um, and not necessarily always the younger from the older, but you know, you can learn from spiritually from young yeah. Christians as well. They're yeah. usually very, very enthusiastic, <laughs> and you can, uh, you know, pick up, you know, amazing. Even children come out with amazing, wonderful things that God has shown them. So, so we we're learning, and so the ox is showing us in our rulership. We're still learning, but but Jesus, but is refreshing us. And there's that humility as well. I am humble and gentle at heart. So I always think of the, mm, the service mm. um, that we, we are, you know, we're serving Jesus mm. like he came not to be served, but to ser mm. serve. And that taking his yoke, it requires a surrendering mm. as well. There's another lovely verse I discovered, Isaiah 1 verse 3. Um, it's part of the verse. It just says, an ox knows its owner. Mm, I like that. <laughs> so we need to know our, we know our God. We know who he is. Mm. It's good to remind ourselves mm. who he is, that he is the creator of everything mm. and that he holds, ev holds everything together. So there's just one other thing that I discovered um, in 1 Kings 7 verse 25. It's talking about um, Solomon's temple, and it talks about a sea of brass, um, which rested on figures of twelve oxen, and th those twelve oxen were three were facing north, three south, three east, and three west, underneath this sea of brass, which was really the um, what used to be. In the tabernacle, it would have been the laver, mm -hmm. so it held the water. And in that sea of brass, they, the 12 is probably symbolic of the 12 tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. And um, the priests washed their hands and their feet in it. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought there was something in that to think about. That uh, I don't know why... They particularly chose the oxen for the to represent the twelve tribes, but I just thought that that washing, that purification, when we wash our mm. hands and our feet, that um, in mm. that mm. The sea of brass. But that might be slightly off the point. <laughs> Not sure. Thank you. Very much. Yeah. So the the. The final face of these four faces is, is the man. And um, of course the others were um, a metaphor, a symbol. Whereas here we have invited to think about the image of God being actually the, 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 the man, the presenting face of God to humanity includes and uh, the, the man. And Jesus says, if you've seen me, Mm -hmm. You've seen the Father, mm -hmm. and so there is a. Uh, the, for me, this is a, an opportunity to to understand our rulership um, as an extension of Jesus on the earth. Really, He is the Man. Really, that we are being conformed to the likeness of in Romans eight, as I've mentioned already. One John two verse six says that we should walk as Jesus walked, mm -hmm. and so we're invited to to step out in tune. Mm -hmm with the way in which Jesus would handle the situation. I love the Psalms because they are a fully orbed range of emotions um, and situations from sadness, elation, whatever, uh, weeping with joy, whatever's going on, they're all there. And, and in them, I think, is the, a fully orbed expression of, of what it means to be a human being, which I think is, is good to embrace and drink in in how we interact and rule, how we steward um, this, uh, the face of God in our community, in our interactions with family, wherever the setting that the Lord is saying, we are called into a, a, a way of being that, that is a stewarding, ruling 
way of thinking. This is, is a, quite a, a different way of thinking, isn't it? Potentially to how you might normally see yourself. That you're, there is a nobility and dignity in our humanity mm. that we can convey mm. actually in the way in which we relate with, with mm. people because we are sharing the common image of God. Mm. And that we are being on a trajectory of conform to the, the blueprint, the likeness um, there in Jesus. So I'm struck by a couple of things, really the, um, the, the, the tenderness and compassion of Jesus really is so uh, that the, you know he has deep feelings of, of love mm. towards us. The patience of the Lord mm. in 2 Peter 3 9 the Lord does not delay as though he were unable to act not slow about his promise as some count slowness but is extraordinarily patient towards mm. us mm. not wishing for any to perish but for all to come to repentance. So our attitude in our rulership and interface with people is one of great patience. The goodness and loving kindness of, of, of God um, expressed in Jesus, that uh, Titus 3, verse 4 to 5, when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Saviour appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration, the renewal of the Holy Spirit. In other words, he, he is full of goodness and loving kindness towards, towards us. That is what we are expressing in our rulership, which is why I keep talking about um, being a, blessed to be a blessing. Mm. This is what we're called to. Um, somebody recently as well was reframing um, a facet of that definition of blessing to include empowering mm. Because if you are blessing people, you're really um, enabling them to, to do whatever it is that God has called them to do in this life. That, that you're helping them to line up with God's vision for them. And so that's really what, what the, that is the ultimate in the way in which we think about blessing. It's not just to sort of shovel a whole load of gold at somebody's feet, you know, and say, let's be blessed, we're thinking, you know, have a magnet, you know. Uh, whatever you're trying to do, um, that God is God is much more um, interested in knowing how you can facilitate and empower the people around you. That is what we're doing in any in, in our community. That's how we're seeing ourselves. That's how we should walk through the land uh, with a with an eye to to enabling people to line up with who God has called them to be, whether they're chattering chatters and chatten. Um, which is the true name of a community group that Rachel's involved themselves with, <laughs> the Chatterers of Chatton, or whether you're in the Knitting Ladies of Shillbottle that knit a colossal amount of baby clothes every year. I don't know what they're doing, you know. I think they're, they're watching so much Emmerdale Farm, you know. Mm. And, and then they don't know what to do with all this knitting, so it all ends up going to Tabitha's Place and other places, that is a, a clove, clothing bank in... Uh, Elswick in Newcastle. So there is this interaction where you're enabling people to actually express something that is actually in line with God's goodness and God's values and God's kingdom. Um, if we're going to be like Jesus and to walk like Jesus, then what did Jesus do? Acts 10 verse 38. You know, he went about, well, Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power and how he went about doing good. Mm -hmm. And healing all who were oppressed by the devil. I mean, it's got a little bit of a dirty, dirty um, word, um, good works, in the context of Reformation. We, we tend to be a little bit nervous if people start talking about good works. Or bonny face, that's what it means, good, good, good actions, good doings. But I mean, God wants us to flow in a good doings way, um, with, in how we are in, on this earth. And Jesus just went about doing good. And healing all those oppressed of the devil. I mean, he didn't go out on some mass program within his physical body of, you know, organising every, everybody and everything, you know, sorting out Jerusalem's food distribution welfare centre, mm -hmm. whatever it was. I mean, you, he, with the eye to the bigger picture, you could see 5,000 people down the way that might be good at that. Mm -hmm. You know, the greater works that we are doing, if you're going to talk in those terms... I'm sure is the multiplication 
of, 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 of Jesus' ability to reach through the hands and feet that we are. So, praise the Lord. So if we're going to rule well, we cannot say to ourselves, oh, well, I'm a sort of an oxy sort of person. <laughs> or, you know, some people flapping up there in the sky can hardly see them, you know, they're off, off in some high saw. Um, and, uh, or, the, you know, some humanity version where, I mean, Jesus wept on this earth. He grew two or he was four, I think it says that, doesn't it? But, you know, the, the days of weeping that he did. But, you know, we aren't called to every day being a blubbering mess on the floor. You know, there are some lion moments to, to consider. Oh. So if we're going to rule well, then we need to encompass in our personal lives, mm -hmm. as well as how we complement one another in our giftings, netted across this region, mm -hmm. um, those, those four faces for sure. Um, so now you have this opportunity for five minutes, or, or it could be more, depending on how long the quiches come out of the oven. <laughs> all that. Um, oh, the smell of food. Shocking. Yeah. I, I would not recommend um, that I, I, years ago I was in a house church group where they, they thought we get, we're all going to have a three day fast, you know, help people to learn a bit more about fasting. And we'll accumulate it by having a meeting at the pastor's house. And the wife had, had put on this gorgeous supper to finish the fast. And all the way through the, the last two or three hours, I said, agony. You know, you couldn't focus on anything. We've got this lovely smell wafting out from the kitchen. Mm. So bear with, tell your stomachs to just shut up, and, and let's enjoy for a moment, just, just um, and, and I'd love to do a little bit of reconfiguring here, but I, I, I recognise that we're all perched in our seats and it's a bit difficult to move, but I'd like us to be a threesomes if, we, if you can, so that looks as if Cathy's going to be with Nigel, I don't know if she can, can you swizzle around with a chair maybe Cathy? Um, the three wise monkeys over here, I don't know what you're going to do, but maybe you can natter. Um, Doug, Rachel and Colin, if you can do a, a threesome. Tom, Tracy, and Caroline, Eleanor, Francis and myself. This is what I want you to do. I've made the classic mistake of getting you moving. I want you to think about how balanced currently you are in those four faces. How balanced are you currently in those four faces? Are there areas of strength where you're definitely very oxy? And are there areas where you're not so strong, where you, you need to be a bit more lion-like? Okay, thank you. Have we got the question? Yeah. 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 Well, if we start, if we start with Paul, we're going to go to Rachel. I'm going to have the safest time of the up by then. I've been with Rachel before. Do you see yourself as any of those particular lines? Or not? Or an ox? The ego is... I might as well start. The ego kind of resonates with me because uh, several years ago that's how I've been through that moment. Pivot on my journey with getting out of creativity and stuff like that. So we'll go down to where it's kind of coming on and speaking to me on the way down. Especially the night when we got there and we were telling them. I wrote things down and I'd been looking at the scripture and we saw him and he was wings and stuff like that. When I got there, I was in the tent, the first thing I saw was this picture someone had painted of an eagle. Was this, was my and then that weekend, I'd seen it to do a course. It's a long session, learning that we had pictures for the eagles. So I went to a and I was like, oh, gosh, you get guidelines. And you sat down with somebody and you did a picture for each one. Oh, and this person made a picture for me, and so the picture was uh, I think, 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 uh
But that was a couple of other things. But that picture is really good. Stop wearing it. You're going to have better than me. Because it's an area of the rest of your life. You're going to have to come here. 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 But it's a bit like your life now. The minute you leave, you're in the world. It's really healthy. You're going to have to go out. 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 Take them out. What if you go out? Take them out. 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 Take them
And then they came to Jesus, and they, and they got the favour of the Lord. So they went back and they managed it. It was almost as though they'd never asked us before. But you know, so, well, this is a great idea. Why have you come with us? And then I think, I think we did. <laughs> and so, um, uh, and so, 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 and
Okay, if I could have your attention now, please. It's lovely seeing all these different buzz of conversations going on. Just relax, Kathy. Don't move yet, love. Just, just relax. Um, hallelujah. Wow. This is really good, isn't it? How we're buzzing here. Um, being uh, the, the Proverbs 14, verse 4. Um, Mary quoted that, that about where the, if there are no um, ox, the major mm. Mm. is clean. Yeah. Mm. But where there are oxen, there is a harvest. Amen. And what I've always taken great comfort from, from that verse, it's a, it's a, a life verse for me, mm -hmm. is, is that um, when we were raising our seven children um, in a small three-bedroom Bex Council house, there was what, pulling on my physics background, there was what I call a dynamic equilibrium going on. Mm -hmm. Where as fast as we were taking stuff up the stairs, the kids were bringing stuff down the <laughs> stairs. So one had to have a sort of sense of joy. Mm -hmm. Peace. What is it? That righteousness? What is the kingdom of God? Mm -hmm. yeah. Righteousness? Joy in the Holy Ghost. Boom, boom, boom. Righteousness, peace. That's the kingdom of God. And, and so there was this great sense of, of, of just being you know, righteousness, a bit of peace, a bit of joy in this dynamic equilibrium called the mess mm -hmm. yeah. going on, <laughs> which horrified my mother <laughs> when, she, when she came. And, you know, Mary had to really keep cool mm -hmm. and not feel intimidated by um, a, a, a mum that had raised just two children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who's trying to put a, a regulatory system on our lives that wouldn't work with seven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the dynamic of that was really messy. And yet, actually, there was life in it and harvest mm -hmm. and increase. Mm -hmm. So that's my segue for what's about to happen at this point as well. So uh, if we're going to talk about rulership and the kingdom and the way in which we are, um, uh, I believe that God is very happy with messiness um, and um, although I have read books and I do accept at the same time that God is a very precise and detailed God yeah. I do get it, mm -hmm. he knows about everything the sparrows, the number of hairs rapidly diminishing on my head but nevertheless he knows the number and so on but, but, but there is a, an expansiveness and superfluity a surplus an abundance a crazy abundance you know, where things are uh, 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 doing all sorts of things in wild places that you think have no um, utilitarian sense to them. But God is enjoying all the messiness of it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something to embrace in how we approach our rulership as well, mm -hmm. just to let it be a little bit um, hanging out around the edges. Um, we were talking in our little group of uh, the w wise advice of David Forster, who's in the Pockets Network and um, couldn't come today. Um, he uh, presented the topics about a year ago, what we would say to our younger selves. And the answer that he came up with was, lighten up. Mm. Well, lighten up. You're too intense, younger version of me. You know, you, yeah. you just need to just lighten up in, in whatever it is. Get some of that righteousness, peace. Mm. Join the Holy Ghost. And that's actually part of what we're conveying mm -hmm. out there in our rulership. Because... Isn't that the interface we want to, want to present? We don't want to be victims of that classic joke, you know, be a Christian, have joy like me, you know. <laughs> that sort of way of talking, you know. 
I, I used to go and mess around with all these things and now I'm a Christian. <laughs> it doesn't work that way, does it? So let's enjoy it and let's be light about it. You know, it's okay. Our rulership, whatever it is, isn't a big to-do list mm. that's cracking us up and, and sending us crazy. It's all right. You know, he's got it in hand. Somebody told us about um, allowing space around your weeks, your days, um, like the gleaning principle. You know where uh, a person did, would glean, they would leave space for the for people to glean around the edges of their crops, yeah. and to apply that in the context of our days. To Numbers, Psalm ninety verse something, verse twelve. Is it the teach us Lord to number our days, apply our hearts to wisdom, to allow space for interruption, to allow um, a, a little bit of messiness around the edges. I once had the misfortune of shadowing a pastor, um, a particular pastor some years ago, who had got into some efficiency drive system. His poor wife. Mm. You know, I mean, they were, they, they were fitting every, every five minutes of the day was scheduled. Oh, no. The poor last, you know, this half hour is ironing. You know, flip the timer, you know, the half hour timing switch. Next thing, you know, there was no <gasps> space at all. It just doesn't work like that, does it? I once had the misfortune of trying to work out a menu plan for the week. And I, I thought, I'll, I'll, I'll get my menu plan for every day of the week. But of course, we never eat all the surplus food if you do that. You've got to have some days where you're eating at leftovers. Otherwise, you know, there's a problem. You can't just keep having your menu all the way every day. Give yourself space in what you're doing. Susan, love you. <laughs> Can you just pray a thank you over the food <laughs> that we're about to have? I'm assuming it's ready. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord, we just thank you for all that we've heard and, mm. and taken part in and mm. taken into our hearts this morning. Mm. Mm. And Lord, we just thank you for everybody that's brought food for us mm. to share now. And we ask you to bless it to us in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Can we go... Um, Clock, anti-clockwise, there's savoury in there and there's desserts and drinks out here. So um, uh, if you want to head off and let's assume that there really is food out there, you can step out in faith and head to there. <laughs> so we'll come back together again in about an hour's time. Where are Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.